Okay, here we're gonna be looking at calcium deficiency in tomatoes. Now our tomatoes, we always wanna look this nice consistent red color, or in some cases there might be some yellow varieties. But we're seeing that color consistent from the very edge or margin all the way through. However, in calcium deficiency, you can see even at the immature stage, there'll be this browning that occurs typically towards the blossom end. So let's first look at calcium's importance. Well, first off, it's an immobile nutrient. That means it doesn't really travel very well through the plant, meaning deficiencies tend to show up in areas where it needs to travel the furthest. Point uh, being right here, if we look at the image of the tomato, where the blossom end is, the, all the nutrients have to come from the stem uh, down through the early part of the tomato, the area that is the closest to the main stalk, and then that calcium travels down. Because it's immobile, it doesn't travel very far, so in the case of deficiencies, the plant is more likely to show these deficiency symptoms more towards the end of the blossom, because that's the furthest distance that calcium would have to travel. Well, to prevent blossom and rot in the most economical, uh, it's very damaging uh, to growers. You can lose an entire crop uh, despite growing the entire plants. Uh, so it's why this is of economic importance. Calcium helps form compounds in cell walls. That's what helps kind of keep their integrity. That's why areas here that have poor calcium will be kind of soft as well as discolored. Uh, calcium also stimulates root and leaf development and influences the uptake of other nutrients. So more than just calcium, it also influences other things. It can also be involved with cell signaling. Now there's a tomato trial here. It was done in a greenhouse in, in a hydroponic setup here to help maintain consistent conditions. And the hydroponics allowed only very specific nutrients to be added compared to if it was a soil-based system. You're gonna see a control plant and that was sold a, fed a balanced fertilizer, uh, what a normal plant should look like, and then the test plant. And that was fed all the nutrients except the one being studied to allow for the isolated deficiency symptoms to show up. So this is a perfect example of what calcium deficiency actually looks like in a tomato plant. This is even before, and this is a severe case, before we even get to the actual fruit. Notice the browning of the new leaves. You can see this newer growth has that browning uh, that is occurring. There tends to be more damage to the upper or newer portions of the plant, so that's one characteristic of a calcium deficiency in plants. Keep in mind though, this plant has uh, no fruit yield in it, so the odds uh, are not well of having a marketable uh, fruit or mature on this plant when you're seeing it in the plant even before you get flowers. So again, showing an extreme case, uh, we could see it definitely on the fruit in the other image, but here is what it looks like in the actual plant. The comparison, again, here's that same uh, plant there where we had minus that calcium treatment, and then we have the control, that's what a plant should look like. This uh, should be upright, but it grew so aggressively, you could see it kind of fell over. We're seeing the consistent green color. Some areas, though, in the test plant do have normal, that green leaf color, uh, but that most recent growth, that newer growth, tends to get that browning that occurs. So how do we correct this problem? Well, calcium should be fed to the plants repeatedly since it does take time to build up in the plants, uh, especially if a deficiency does exist. Here's two products here. One's called Biomin Calcium, one calls CalMag Max. Biomin, start usually at an ounce per gallon that can be applied to the leaves and a drench as well. It's OMRI certified. I use caution when tank mixing because it may not get along with other uh, nutrients so typically applied alone. CalMag Max follows the same basic dilution rate. It's not OMRI certified, but it does improve calcium and magnesium levels in the plant. And as always with most calcium products, use caution when tank mixing so not to have any potential uh, interactions that would be unwanted. Feeding these to a tomato plant uh, consistently or on a repeated schedule will help reduce the chance that you ever see a calcium deficiency.